Hi, everyone. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday as uh, we uh, look at uh, the severe weather risk, <clears throat> which is going to be uh, a little extensive here across parts of the upper Midwest. The Storm Prediction Center has a, an area of slight risk, and you can see it here on uh, uh, in northern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, extending through the southern half, almost the southern half of Wisconsin and northernmost Illinois back to Chicago with an area of enhanced risk. Uh, indicated inside. Also slight risk uh, down through uh, North Texas into Western Oklahoma. Marginal risk uh, covers a fairly large area uh, that pins its way down into uh, South in, in, into uh, Texas and then goes all the way back up into the Northern Plains and into the Great Lakes with a general area of thunderstorms back up through the Rockies. So it's a fairly busy day but I just kind of want to take you through um, the next couple uh, and here's Tuesdays with the slight risk of, of severe weather snaking from uh, Texas all the way on up uh, through uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, uh, in through Iowa and through Minnesota inside a larger area of marginal risk. And of course, you can see where the general thunderstorm risk is. And that is for Tuesday. And we'll look at Wednesday. No severe weather risk indicated yet. Uh, but a large area of general thunderstorms. Uh, usually with the Storm Prediction Center, if you see something on their maps on day three or day four or beyond, and I'll show you day four through day eight, if you see something um, in there uh, for the days in the long range, it, it's usually a good idea to pay attention. For example, here on day five, which would take us to the end of the week, uh, it's got... Uh, they're already looking at the possibility of a 15% risk of thunderstorms in the in parts of the southern plains. So um, I would pay attention to that. Okay, just so uh, just just as a heads up, when they uh, when they look at it and see it that far ahead, uh, there's uh, usually a problem with this. All right, so we've got the western satellite view, and you can see a lot of clouds and showers and uh, moving up uh, through uh, the Dakotas this morning. A uh, little bit of moisture coming up into the northern Rockies, clouds in the central Rockies, and at least for the time being, other than just some clouds, it's fairly quiet uh, in much of the west, what, what much of the area along the west coast. I um, Let me go to the east and switch that around for you. Now, here in the east, a little bit busy this morning because we have this uh, storm sitting in the Gulf of Maine and it has stalled out for the time being, which is what models have uh, in, did indicate. This is a pretty wrapped up gale center and there's actually uh, clouds getting dragged around on the west side down through upstate New York and uh, they have uh, are covering areas of uh, southern New England northeastward, although, you know, the back edge of the cloud line look, it looks as if, at least at this point of the day, uh, which is at... Uh, uh, a little after 9 a.m., back to about New York City and northeastern Pennsylvania. And I don't know how far south and west those clouds will get because eventually this is going to start moving away uh, to the east. Uh, we uh, are in a pattern now where everything is progressive and should, uh, should move along. So this is sort of a temporary stall. Now, there isn't too much that's changed since yesterday. I did cut a video last night rather late. So, you know, there really isn't too much that's different here. But I just want to show you on the on the upper air as we uh, move along. So here, here we have our system this morning. Here's a system that's south near Iceland, south of Greenland near Iceland, and we've got all this general troughing along the west coast. Again, what's different from last week was that we do not have a blocking high here, and we do not have a storm that's sitting near the Azores and and sat there for days and days and days. So. Everything is going to be able to move along, which means that this ridge that's beginning to build up from uh, the from Texas northeastward through the Great Lakes is going to progress to the East Coast. So we are going to have summery conditions here Wednesday and particularly Thursday when many areas are going to reach uh, upper 80s and no, low 90s all the way up uh, into New England. And in the meantime, out <clears throat> in the West, you have an unusually deep trough. Uh, in the moving into the northern and Rockies uh, with uh, energy rotating around it. You know, here's a system off uh, near Newfoundland, and there's your ridge in the east. But again, no real sign of blocking here, although we do have a ridge starting to build up 
in the Atlantic toward Greenland. So that's something we're going to have to watch. Now, as we progress forward, we are going to cool it down a bit on Friday, you know, pointing out that there is a system here that's coming in the flow around in Canada that's just going to bring in a, a, a cooler shot of air, or at least flattens the ridge out. And then we have a system for the weekend that heads towards the Great Lakes. But notice, by the way, we do have from that Atlantic Ridge uh, that's building. And, and let me just let's go back a little bit here. Um, here's that Atlantic Ridge. We do have the beginnings of a weak upper high that that forms just uh, between Greenland and Iceland. This is nothing like the strength of the block that we saw last week, but it is. It, it, it may be enough to create a uh, troughing in the eastern part of the United States in the longer term. So I think that after we get through the rest of this week, we're going to see temperatures trend back down closer to normal. And because there are going to be higher than normal pressures up in the North Atlantic, up toward Greenland, there's going to be a tendency for troughing in the eastern part of the United States throughout much of probably all of next week and maybe even into the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it, it is indicating this. And you can see it here. We're in the, at the end of the long range uh, pa uh, stretch here, which is Tuesday, May 30th. So we're actually even beyond Memorial Day. So, I mean, if you wanted to, if, if, if I was going to make an early guess, um, I think we're going to probably see um, average temperatures for much of next week. And I can't rule out the possibility that we could have some uh, wet weather to deal with for the Memorial Day holiday weekend at some point. It's very hard this time of year especially down in, in, in coastal areas to, to str string out three nice days uh, in a row. You can see how much difficulty we're having now. Uh, a late May, it still can be problematic. All right, so a quick look at how this all plays out from a practical weather perspective, and we'll roll it back. And there you have our low. Now, here's the GFS. This is for uh, this morning. Uh, it does start to move the low away, and um, the winds will begin to diminish along the coast as well. And here's this energy going into the uh, central plains on Wednesday. That's a pretty impressive uh, low by by, by uh, pressure standards, and it's going to be producing some snows up in the Rockies Wednesday and Thursday, and uh, even into early Friday, still having some action. And with low pressure coming out of Texas, you can see where the severe weather threats are going to be. Um, here's today's severe weather threat. Let me just back it up on the GFS. I mean, this is the area that's being indicated by the Storm Prediction Center. And here we have for Tuesday and Wednesday. So here's, you know, the extension that goes down into Texas. And even on Thursday into Friday, uh, we're going to probably see some severe weather. Here's, I, I think I said this last night. Friday into Saturday from northeast Texas into the middle Mississippi Valley uh, looks to me like uh, it could be rather a, an impressive breakout of uh, severe thunderstorms. And then we're going to see that change in the east with that this taste of summer Wednesday and Thursday coming to an end. And then after that, <clears throat> to me, again, it looks generally cooler for next week and opportunities for rain along the way, although the specifics, I think, at this point are um, just kind of... Uh, you know, I, 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 who knows? <laughs> you know, it's just hard to say. Okay, so let's look at the, I want to look at the, finish off with the temperatures. And I'll look at the east. And so you guys can see what, what exactly is happening in terms of 90s. Um, but, all right, so here we are today. Um, here's Tuesday. So we're back to 70s. You can see the 80s and 90s building across the south. Uh, by Wednesday afternoon, those 90s are pushing up uh, into Virginia and probably into southern Maryland with 80s all the way into New England. And for Thursday, you know, it's going to be every bit of upper 80s and low 90s over a fairly large area uh, here in the east. While meanwhile, in the west, because we don't want to forget you guys out west, it is going to be cold. <laughs> you know, really, look at this, you know. You didn't get this much all winter in some places, did you? Uh, but here we are, uh, Tuesday. These are afternoon temperatures in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Wednesday especially. Look at Wednesday. I mean, you got places here not getting out of the 20s. I mean, I know some of that is elevation driven, but still, uh, it is very cold. And look at this on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, teens. 
uh, probably even some single digits in some places. I wouldn't be surprised. And then uh, still very chilly uh, out west. Not too bad in California, though. It does warm up kind of nicely, pleasant in the 70s, it looks like. Um, the southwest doesn't look all that particularly warm, by the way. Um, that, that cool air does push all the way down uh, the entire week. I mean, there are some usual suspect spots, yes, but a lot of areas are going to be... Um, you know, reasonably warm, but not outrageously warm. All right, folks, have a great day uh, on your Monday. Enjoy it. And uh, if you're in the East, get ready for, for some nice summertime weather. If you really like the summertime, uh, you're going to have your taste of it. Might be a great uh, opportunity to test your air conditioners to make sure they're in complete working order. And thank you for being here on my YouTube channel. If you're new, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. Just hit the little red subscribe button and you'll get notifications every time new videos come up. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.